This is Rolling Live. Hey, it's Matt Pinfield coming to you from Rolling Live Studios. There's nothing I love more than to talk to my friends about music and about their careers. It's what I've been doing for so many years now. And my guest today, I've been friends with for 27 years when he came through the Asbury Park area uh, with his band Everclear uh, back around the time of their uh, first full-length album, World of Noise. And we have a long relationship and a lot of things to talk about. Art Alexakis is with us today. Art, good to see you, brother. Good to see you, brother. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm doing good. You look good. good, man. I'm feeling good working out. I'm yeah. working out too. I, you know, I, I got diagnosed, as you know, with multiple sclerosis a few years ago. And um, I just changed my diet, changed the way I live. I swim every day. I put a pool in my backyard and I, I swim, you know, about 300 meters a day. That's great. And uh, and ride ride a bike and you know uh, yoga and everything. And I just feel great. I'm, I feel actually I feel like I'm in the best shape I've ever been. You look the best I've ever seen you. Yeah, thank you. Art. I mean, I you know, you're 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 in shape. Yeah. Are you I, happy? Yeah, I'm very happy, and I feel great because I work out all the time. I hike. And that's the thing, and it certainly helps me, and it keeps me in the moment. And I love that. And speaking of moments, I've had some great ones with you. You know, I was thinking about, nice when, segue. <laughs> you know, seriously, when we were in Albany, New York at one of the many Edge Fests that I host, remember when you used to play the right. Edge Fest in the late 90s, early 2000s, yeah. and uh, you were so nice, you kind, you brought me up on stage to sing part of Sin City with you mm -hmm. by ACDC. I remember. Outside, in, and it was just you know, like thousands of people. And 30, 40,000 people. Yeah, and yeah, it was unbelievable. Those, it, those big sheds just yeah, packed to the brim. Yeah, it was yeah. so much fun. And that was yeah. such a great uh, great experience for me. So thank you for that, yeah. among many other things. Absolutely. So, you know, we met back in uh, about 1993. And, um, you know, and it just, what always, uh, one of the things that I've always loved is your honesty in your songs, the lyrics. You've always touched on things that have happened in your life. Very autobiographical in many of those tracks. Or, 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 some of them and then other ones are really kind of your observations you know what i mean of what's going on absolutely and there's yeah. also sometimes i just write stories yeah that, that aren't autobiographical or from observations or a lot of times like you're talking about it might not be straight autobiography but i'll take different instances and create characters from it but uh i think a writer's job is to be able to do that in different ways in different forms and if people can't tell the difference, you're doing your job, right? Yeah. You're being a writer. And that's what I am. You absolutely at are. At the end of the day. You know, going back, you know, Santa Monica is the, the song that literally it, it blew up and broke through. And it's that is very autobiographical. Santa Monica, the song, yeah. is about comfort zones. I was living in Oregon, and I wrote a song about just, it was right before... You know, we had just gotten signed to, to Capitol and I was starting to feel the pressure of it and I had anxiety and depression anyways because uh, I've been fighting that my whole life. And it's like I uh, got close to the ocean in Oregon and my anxiety went away. I'm like, that's my comfort zone. And then I went home and started writing a song about relationships and comfort zones with not just relationships with other people, but with myself. You know, yeah. and I finished it and I named it Santa Monica, which pissed off my record label to no end because they're like, well, it doesn't say Santa Monica anywhere in the chorus or anywhere in the song. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Welcome to Led Zeppelin, dude. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, so Welcome to rock and roll. That's right. It's called Santa Monica. Yeah. Well, can we call it Watch the World Die? Santa Monica in parentheses. I go, absolutely not no santa monica that's the name of the song that's my comfort zone that's where i'm from that's yeah. where i was born and raised that's where i did a lot of my growing yeah you know and falling down and learning yeah for sure it's a great song there's so many great songs on that record too and then there's songs where you're dealing with the recovery because you, you know you finally quit everything cold turkey and and got off drugs at about the age of 24 right or was it 22 20 22 i got clean off drugs i kept drinking till the uh, uh the age of 
27. Right. And um, I've been sober ever since. So instead of reaching for alcohol and drugs, I'd reach for my guitar. Yeah. And so when people tell me that my music has helped them, I think the large part of that is because, and they might not know it, but I know it, is that it helped me. And when you do something positive for anyone, you know, you put you put good energy in this world, even towards yourself. I believe that it emanates and 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 it, it pays forward to other people. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah it's it's amazing. Now the next record was so much for the afterglow. Now I remember hearing the title track for the first time in the opening of the record and being blown away by just the vocal intro that was going that was so Beach Boys, like yeah. that right before this is a song about Susan and just being blown away by that. Cause I was like, wow, where's this record going? I remember talking to you about it and <laughs> yeah. you didn't, you were like, I, I'm not really surprised by all that, but I was really su pleasantly surprised by that. Yeah. I just, I wanted to do something. I, I had a budget and yeah. I, and you know, and I had a chip on my shoulder because especially like people was calling us one hit wonders and and this and that and this and that and you proved them wrong <laughs> and I, yeah and I, it was kind of an f you to them yeah. and i kind of proved them wrong yeah. so but you know i put a song on that record called one hit wonder which became our fourth single on the record and uh my a and r guy's like man you're tempting fate don't put this song on the record i'm like <laughs> it's yeah. going, i have creative control dude it's going on the record <laughs> exactly which is great yeah it was great that my mom saw me have success. I remember my mom coming out when uh, Brooklyn Fave went platinum. I had this woman at Capitol Records, you know, set her up with a first class flight down to LA and uh, bought her a dress and did all this stuff. And then we're in, in a limo and she's like, what is this boy? You know, she's a hillbilly. Yeah. She's from North Carolina. Yeah. It's like, what the hell is this? I go, our record went platinum. Goes, what does that mean? I go, means we sold a million records, mom. She goes, a million people bought your record? And then we pull up to the 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 hotel, the, the restaurant, and there's a red carpet, and there's paparazzi, and there's just all this stuff. And there, there's like 200 fans out there. And we get out, and my mom goes, wait a minute. Where are all these people like making noise and yelling and clapping? I go, she goes, is this for you? Uh, yeah she goes so you did good i'm like yeah mama i did good she's like okay and then she just rocked it from then on she was just <laughs> she was like that's my boy you know people <laughs> started interviewing that's that's my son <laughs> that's great touring has been a big part of what you've done playing live is something that it's been a big part of whatever clears about and what well, you're we're, about we're a rock and roll band yeah you know it's like you were talking earlier about like guitars on the radio yeah and i i was and that's what the 90s people talked about uh being alternative i remember where i was at um uh woodstock 99 and people are like so what's alternative about alternative music and i go really nothing except for the fact that mo most of the bands were guys and gals like me that grew up in the 70s listening to Cheap Trick and Aerosmith and Led Zeppelin and, and then listened to Replacements and then Pixies and Sonic Youth and, and, and uh, you know, Jane's Addiction yeah. and, and, you know, all these bands. To me, it was just an alternative. And I just loved that there was a renaissance of rock and roll guitar bands yeah. in the mid to late 90s. It was yeah. great. It was a great period, absolutely. It was. Some great bands. Like you, I love the 90s, but I mean, I love all sorts of rock and roll. And I love hip hop. You know, I want to hear Public Enemy and Eric B. and Rakim and, yeah. you, know, you know, this yeah. this stuff. Good music's good music. It doesn't matter it when, it, when or where it came from. I'm looking forward, Art, to the next uh, tour. I mean, you, I mean, I mean, we're going to do a Summerland. Yeah, I mean, Summerland's always been a, such a great summer package when you put that together with the different bands. It's well, just fun, gonna, man. You know, it's it's going to be great. Promoters are excited about it. Yeah, excited about the time, and uh, I'm just it's it's rock. It's just unapologetically rock this yeah. year. We're we're stripped down. We're a four piece, and that's the way we're meant to be. Yeah, just rocking. So and that's a good night of entertainment. It's a, if you like <laughs> rock and roll, man, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna enjoy the show. If you love 
90s rock and roll, you're going to love this show. Yeah. Appreciate I think it. it's going to be great. We look forward to it and we'll thanks, let man. everybody know about it. All right. Thanks for coming in today. Thanks for having me. It was so great to have you on here. Always love seeing you. Always love talking music with you and talking about life. You know? Yeah. It's great to see you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah.